Good afternoon, Year 9. Welcome to another lesson on uh, Much Ado About Nothing. We're going to be looking specifically and quite closely at uh, Claudio um, today. But before we do that, I want you to do now. Do, do the do now. I want you to write an epitaph for two of the main characters. Now, an epitaph is a phrase or form of words written in memory of a person who has died. Um, it's normally what goes on their tombstone. So a nice upbeat start for the lesson there. So you can pick um, any of the characters and it's a good way of thinking about them, actually, you know, and sort of summarising their character. And write a little epitaph like the ones we've got on the, on the tombstones there to, uh, for them. All right, then five minutes on that. Usual quick check as we're still working remotely, hopefully for just the next couple of weeks and we can all meet up again in September. For this lesson, you will need a copy of the extract from Act 5, Act 5 Scene 3, access to YouTube and different coloured pens and highlighters. Our learning objective today is we're going to explore the character of Claudio. Um, so your title is just the character of Claudio. Yeah, hang on, you may well ask. Haven't we missed Act 5 Scene 2? But we'll come back to that. We're going to focus on Claudio for now, looking at how he responds to Hero's death. Next time we'll look at Benedict and Beatrice's relationship. At the end of Act 5, Scene 1, Leonardo instructs Claudio to hang an epitaph on Hero's tomb, because of course Claudio thinks Hero's dead. What do you think Hero's epitaph should say? This is what it does say. Done to death by slanderous tongues was Hero that here lies. Death in guerdon of her wrongs gives her fame which never dies. So the life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. Wonderful. So as ever on the YouTube link there, watch the scene summary of Act 5, Scene 3 and then the clip from the scene. Write your first impressions about this scene. How is Claudio presented here? A song and prayers for Hero. Very sad moment, although it's steeped in dramatic irony because we all know that um, Hero's not dead. Claudio, now unto thy bones, good night. Yearly will I do this right, Don Pedro. Good morrow, masters, put your torches out. The wolves have prayed, and look, the gentle day before the wheels of Phoebus round about dapples the drowsy eath with spots of grey. Thanks to you all, and leave us, fare you well. Claudio, good morrow, masters, each his several way. Don Pedro, come let us sense and put on other weeds, and then to Leonardo's we will go. And Hymen now with luckier issue speeds than this for whom we rendered up this woe. So at the top there, after he's hung the epitaph, Claudio promises to return and do this ritual of mourning each year for Hero. Then a little lower down, Don Pedro also prays and references the changing time uh, by mentioning the sun god Phoebus, Apollo and his chariot. Um, and then right at the bottom, Claudio finished with a reference to another holy being, Hymen, the goddess of marriage. I want you to draw this uh, structure of a tragedy and a comedy, or indeed um, most types of story, into your book. So you've got the prologue at the start there, you've got conflict and rising action, then your climax, then your falling action, and then your denouement. So copy that paragraph into your book. Uh, and, you know, many of Shakespeare's tragedies work on this Greek tragic structure. In many ways, you could argue that Much Ado About Nothing follows this structure. Act 4, scene 1 is the climactic moment of the wedding that it's all building up to. However, a tragedy ends with the death of a tragic hero. You know, think of Macbeth and Othello and Hamlet and all of those. A comedy ends with a wedding or a dance. So having the wedding scene in Act 4 is a big clue that it's not the end of the play and things will be resolved. Now I want you to bullet point the main uh, points of this. This is uh, what it is, what the definition of a hero is, uh, the context of a hero. The term hero is derived, derived from a Greek, Greek word that means a person who faces adversity or demonstrates courage in the face of danger. However, sometimes he faces downfall as well. When a hero confronts downfall, he is recognised as a tragic hero or protagonist. Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, characterises these plays or stories in which the main character is a tragic hero as tragedies. Here the hero confronts his downfall whether due to fate or by his own mistake or any other social reasons. But is much ado about nothing a tragedy? No, it's a comedy. So my, why might we consider Claudio a tragic hero? He faces downfall due to his own mistake. He is jealous and quick to react without thinking things through. 
So in other words, he's his own worst enemy, isn't he? So just bullet point the main points of that, please. Just five minutes. So who might we consider as a hero in this play? It might depend on what your definition includes. Ten minutes to make a list with reasons. So looking at that, uh, hero in literature, broadly the main character in a literary work, typically identified with good qualities and with whom the reader is expected to sympathise. In mythology and folklore, a person of superhuman qualities and often semi-divine origin, in particular one whose exploits were the subject of ancient Greek myths. Hero, also a person who faces adversity or demonstrates courage in the face of danger. Remember that a tragic hero has these qualities, but then also has flaws or can make mistakes that lead to their own downfall. So you've got some notes on the right there. So who do you consider to be a hero in this play? Uh, with some reasons, please. Ten minutes to do that. Um, so who do you think is a hero of this story? We just established that on the uh, previous slide. I just want you to write a paragraph now explaining why you think that using, you know, go back through the lesson and look at the definitions of what a hero is. And I want evidence from the play to justify your opinion. That is quotes either by or, you know, on or about the person that you've decided is a hero. Um, and if you want to, the challenge is to explore the effect of language and structure to show their heroic behaviour. Include reference to context too, if you can. So 15 minutes on that. Um, this is the thing that I want you to, the task rather, that I want you to upload onto class charts for me to have a look at. I know I say this every time, but it's always true. I do thoroughly enjoy uh, reading your work. You are the, by far and away, the most interesting, um, you, you produce the most interesting work to read. So uh, keep it up and I will keep giving out the, uh, the achievement points and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Thank you, Yunai.